Hello everyone. This video is going to be covering everything you could possibly want to know about amino acids. So the first big thing to note about amino acids is that some of them, the essential amino acids, we can't synthesize ourselves. We can't make them in any way. We have to get them from our diet. And these are known as the essential amino acids. And there's a whole number of them here. There's 10 of them. And they fit into the mnemonic, any help in learning these little molecules proves truly valuable. And I should note that these single letters here, they aren't the amino acid code letters that they use, the single letter code, because those are way harder to fit into a mnemonic. But I'll just write them out here. So this first any is going to be arginine, the second is going to be histidine, then isoleucine and leucine. There is tryptophan and threonine, and it, it, since we don't have a codification system, it doesn't matter. So I'll put tryptophan here. And then we also have lysine and then methionine phenylalanine, our other T, so that should be tyrosine, and finally valine. Now there are a couple exceptions to the rules when it comes to these essential amino acids. Like in the case of tyrosine, tyrosine isn't technically an essential amino acid for adults, because we're actually able to synthesize tyrosine from phenylalanine, but children do require more tyrosine than adults, therefore it's essential for children. So that covers our essential amino acids, but what about the amino acids we can synthesize ourselves? It turns out that there's two major categories of amino acids that we can metabolize ourselves. The first are ketogenic, and the second are glucogenic. And there's a lot more glucogenic than ketogenic, but essentially all this means is that during the metabolism of the ketogenic, amino acids, we end up forming acetyl acetate, so ketones, and then if we're metabolizing the glucogenic amino acids, we're going to be metabolizing into glucose. So you've probably noticed already, that here we have this simplified version of the TCA cycle. It turns out that a lot of the metabolic products of amino acids fall straight into the amino acid cycle, and this is because glucose isn't the only source of energy when it comes to running the TCA cycle. We can also break down our amino acids to create energy. So let's just draw on a few of the metabolic products here. So for instance, for a lot of the glucogenic amino acids, we can actually break them down into pyruvate. So amino acids like alanine, I'm just going to use the, the three-letter abbreviation, serine, glycine, threonine, and cysteine all can be degraded into pyruvate and of course these reactions can be reversed as well so we can create these amino acids from pyruvate. Now these would be considered glucogenic because we, we break down glucose into pyruvate but there's also one more amino acid that can be broken down to pyruvate and that's tryptophan. Now the interesting thing about tryptophan however is that it also can be broken down into acetoacetate so it is both a ketogenic and a glucogenic amino acid. There's a couple of these. So, but let's look at the more ketogenic side of things that are breaking broken down to acetoacetate and acetyl-CoA. We have phenylalanine, tyrosine, tryptophan, like I mentioned, lysine, and leucine as well. So what about the rest of this cycle? So, well, we can also convert over here into methylmalonyl-CoA. So isoleucine works here. Methionine works here, as well as valine. We can also turn into fumarate over here with a few. So this would be tyrosine, phenylalanine, and these two structures are very similar because we just have a OH group difference, and aspartate. We can turn into oxaloacetate up here with aspartate, and asparagine. And finally, we can turn into alpha ketoglutarate, first through glutamate, but also we can break down other amino acids into glutamate, including proline, arginine, and histidine. So now we've talked about the essential amino acids, the one we have to get from our diet, and we can't synthesize them in any way. And we've talked about the different ways we can metabolize amino acids, such that we can either get energy out of them or create them from these molecules. But there's also a means of interconverting from one amino acid to another. So here's a whole list 
of all the different amino acids that can be interconverted. So it's really difficult to try and memorize all of these because they're just a bunch of words and there's not a lot of meaning behind them. But some of them we do already know about. For instance, the citrulline to arginine and to arginine is actually part of the urea cycle. So we should know this one already. And a lot of these other ones, we can actually simply look at the structure and what the structure tells us about the molecule really lends itself to understanding how we're converting from one to another. So I've drawn out the structures here, and you don't have to know this, you don't have to memorize this at all, but I think it does help in just illustrating what I'm talking about. So for instance, here's our molecule for alpha-ketoglutarate, and if you look, we've just got this ketone group here, and we're just substituting it for an amine group, and that's how we get from alpha-ketoglutarate to glutamate. So we're just adding on nitrogens over and over. So to get from glutamate to glutamine, we're going to add on another nitrogen group and bump off this alcohol. And if you remember, this is happens when we have urea poisoning, that we have all of our alpha-ketoglutarate ends up getting transferred into glutamate and glutamine because there's just too much urea and ends up putting all of the nitrogens onto these other molecules when we're trying to keep alpha-ketoglutarate in our system. To go from phenylalanine to tyrosine, all you have to do is add this alcohol group to our benzene ring here. But the thing to note about this is that the enzyme responsible for it, which is going to be phenylalanine hydroxylase, if it's deficient, this is how you get phenylketonuria. And if this is the case, you're not going to be able to metabolize any phenylalanine at all. And phenylalanine, if it builds up in your system, it's very toxic, and you can get epilepsy and gait disturbances, and it can cause mental retardation. So phenylketonuria, PKU, is going to be a deficiency of this enzyme, such that we can't convert from this molecule to this one. So let's move on and look at some other interconversions here. We can look at glutamate, and this one's a little bit tricky, but essentially we're just taking this carboxyl group and removing it and then forming a ring structure to form our proline. So we're just sort of bending this around and connecting over to nitrogen like that and popping off our carboxyl group. For the serine to glycine, we're just popping off this alcohol group here, this aldehyde. And then this leaves us with a nitrogen group coming off of the second carbon, and everything else stays the same. Pyruvate to alanine, we're simply removing this keto group and adding a nitrogen as well. So you can see this is a repeated theme throughout. And finally, we have oxaloacetate to aspartate to asparagine, and this is a lot like our glutamate transformation here, where we're just taking our first oxaloacetate and then adding on a nitrogen group here and getting rid of this ketone, adding on a, a, a amide group here, and then to go from aspartate to asparagine, we just add on another nitrogen group, another amine group here. So these are all the interconversions that you're likely to see. You're not going to be tested on the structures and how the structures are changing, but hopefully looking at how the structures are changing helps to remember the ways they interconvert. There's a lot of mnemonics out there as well that really help, but I think the best way to learn these sorts of things is to create your own mnemonic. So with that, I'll leave you to it.